Lovers squirrel. It's a long sustained quarrel. What's going on, world? Hey, everybody. It's your guy, TJ, Mr. New Cool. And it's your girl, Danny. your quietly quarantined quail. Yeah. Speaking of, you know. Times you've are been different. Living under a rock. <laughs> or, um. On a 12 day uh, silent retreat like Jared Leto was. Oh, is that. I, I didn't even know anything about that. Oh, yeah. He was on some type of like silent retreat. And then when he came out of the retreat, it was like in the middle of all of this. And he was like, what the fuck? That's probably the craziest thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we are dealing with the coronavirus. Yeah. This is day. 11. I feel like it's been like 20 plus days since we've heard about Corona. It's probably been longer than that. I mean, it's been, I mean, I've been, you've been hearing about it for a while for, since the end of last year, but then now it's like. About 11 days ago is when... Well, it before put, we get into the episode... Okay. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I didn't mean to cut you off. It's okay. But I didn't want to lose my... Train of thought. My train of thought. Go ahead. If this is your first time listening to us... Welcome. welcome. <laughs> it's your second time. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. Third time or more. You're a lover. Or as Danny says... I don't know what Danny says. I say says. your family. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, now we can kind of go into it. So, you know... Our, our last three episodes were pre-recorded. Yes. So. Before the world went to shit. Yeah. So I only went to one business trip. Yes. Everything else was canceled. Yes. Or postponed. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were all that. I mean, it was it was good because we, we did move during that time. We did move. So we are recording. In the uh, new house. In the new house. Um. It's coming along. There's still lots to be done, but it definitely is feeling like home, I would say. And um, I would say home-ish. Yeah, home. It's, it's starting to get there. Um, there's definitely interesting uh, experiences to be had when you're trying to uh, move homes in the middle of a pandemic. And we could talk a little bit more about that, too, on this episode. But I think, are we ready to jump into our elevator? Yeah, let's let's uh, get into it. Okay, I'll go first. Um, so I'm going to be doing a little bit about both. I'm going to start by going down. I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't say like, what the fuck is going on in the world right now? Like, I'm, you know, it's it's getting easier day by day, but like last week especially. I would wake up every morning and I'd be like, is this real? Like, are we really living in a world where like there is a, we're like straight out of a movie where it's like outbreak and contagion combined or whatever you want to call it. And like we're just in the middle of this global health pandemic and people are just getting sick and dying. And, um, and we have the most like incompetent leader that we could possibly ask for in this situation as far as America is concerned. America is the ghetto because we are just not taking, we didn't take this seriously enough or the powers that be, I should say, didn't. And people are suffering because of it. And shit is just wild. Like, I could go on and on and we'll talk about it throughout this week's, I mean, yeah, this week's episode. But I'm just like floored at the state of the world right now. And it's... In what way? And you say the state of the world, you mean in the state of the United States or the, the I mean, the state, the state of the world that we're in, like the fact that there is a global health pandemic that we're living through right now. And with the fact that like America is, has been and is being piss poor in our response to it. Um, I'm not saying that I'm like surprised, but I'm also like, it's, it is a little bit like unbelievable that we're here um, to an extent. Because- to you or... To to me, in the sense that, like, I I didn't, I mean, I didn't think that this, this was, when I think about things that would have happened in my lifetime, a global health pandemic is not one of those things that, like, pop into my brain. So, it's like, I'm processing all of this in real time. That's fair. No, and I'm just asking just because I, I, I can see why we are where we are for the United States, right? Mm-hmm. We're a... Uh, what is it? We're, we're a capitalistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not gonna say. I don't want to say world. So that's the wrong thing. We're society. A cap- society. Mm-hmm. So it's all about the dollar. So to say that you're gonna shut down for two weeks, when they probably could have did that 
a month ago and it, it could have contained it. But then that means all those businesses is going to be losing out. It, it's, it was too much money. But it wound up like, I feel like they felt like it was going to be like passing. Mm-hmm. And it wound up backfiring. So it made it worse. Does that make sense? I, well, I mean, based on the information that we're getting now, it's more like they knew, the powers that be knew that this shit was going to get serious, but they want, didn't want the economy to fall apart. Exactly. So, That's what I'm saying. Because... You said they thought it was going to like... When I mean, you said like, you thought it was going to like pass by, you thought it was going to just like kind of go I, away. No. What I'm saying is that they knew about it. They knew that if they were to say a month ago, we're shutting down everything for two weeks... That would fuck up the economy. Mm-hmm. So instead, they're like, they're working on it. They know that it's there, but they're working on it with the idea that we're going to find, we're America, you know, we're going to find a way. And, that, and, I, and I'm saying that backfired because people were still living their lives. Yeah, I think people and, were and, trying. And that made it worse. Well, I, and I, I think that people were trying to get their affairs in order. The people, the power, the people that have the power, the people that knew about this but well in advance before the American public, many of them, or not many of them, some of them use the opportunity to capitalize on yeah. this opportunity by selling off their stocks. And no, I, I get in that, other but ones. That, that leads back to the fact that we're a capitalistic society. Yes. It, it's all about the dollar. Yeah. Because we knew about this since January. The yeah. coronavirus was out there since, well, I remember because when Eric and them went to Tokyo, mm-hmm. my mother sent like the articles and... How to protect yourself. Yes. So we knew about it. Mm-hmm. But again, America cares more about the dollar. And that's why we're in the shit show that we're in now. Yeah. That stimulus bill is, I mean, it's still a, it's not enough. And it's not going to be enough for folks. And Well, I, I mean, it's hopefully it's a wake up call to Americans, to the world, to just people. Like when you're sick, I mean, it's, it's the same way like with daycare. When your child is sick, you're not supposed to take your child. Mm-hmm. But there's so many people who take their children because if they don't take their children, they can't call out. They can't call out of work because they may not be a salaried employee or they may not have time or like everything kind of goes hand in hand. So a lot of parents will send their child sick, hoping that no one their teacher this. or no one won't call them and be like, "Your child is sick. You need to come pick them up." Mm-hmm. Not everybody's gonna do, or, or, or not everybody's gonna do. As well as not everybody has the opportunities, I'm going to say, to be able to do like we can. Like, if Tatum is sick, we can find, you know, your mother can take her or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, backup child care. Yeah, it's like, a, like I, I kind of tweeted this earlier. And it's just like, it just, all of this is shining a light on how all the things that we knew were already fucked up about the world are truly things that we've ignored for a long period of time like the inequity in uh health insurance and health coverage the inequity in, as far as pay the inequity in education systems because now you have you know people who can't go to work but if they can't go to work they're getting laid off and then their their health insurance is att- was attached to their employment then you have the people who you know, all these high profile, high paying jobs or whatever, the skilled workers and those people can work from home. But then it's all the quote unquote unskilled workers or the motherfuckers that are keeping the society afloat right now. The delivery drivers and the carry out places, the grocery store cashiers and stuff like that. All the, the those jobs that people don't even want to pay people $15 an hour for are the, the fast food workers are the ones keeping us afloat right now. The fact that some school systems are prepared to do distance learning because they can give every child a Chromebook and then be do- and be done with it while again, I speaking from my experience, Baltimore City, we had to just make up massive paper packets available for download and for teachers to come in on that Friday before everything shut down and come up with work for kids for 5 days because we know that internet and computer access are not things that every student in Baltimore City has. And so it's clearly showing the things that we already knew were there that and the things that people like individual groups of people depending on what you know uh issue they wanted to take up were banging you know on a drum about but now it's just like the smallest thing something that you can't even identify unless it's under a microscope is a thing bringing the world to its knees and showing how fucked up everything is 
everything is fucked up. And in elaborate, what do you mean everything is fucked up? In that in that the coronavirus because I, what I feel like is kind of like the irony of it all is like it's something that it, it was going to take something that was non-discriminatory. Corona, uh, illness, disease will does not discriminate against race, sex, gender, religious orientation, sexual orientation, anything like that. And so because it's affecting everybody from all walks of life, it's it's it highlights how fucked up our approach to different parts of our society are. How fucked up it is that we won't pay people a living wage. How fucked up it is that people we tie health insurance to employment. So if you don't have health ins- if you don't have a job, you can't get health care. How fucked up it is that celebrities and wealthy people can get access to a test even though they're asymptomatic, but people who have been walking going into the hospital, dragging themselves in and showing symptoms can't get tested. How our healthcare system, how people don't have enough equipment and stuff like that. We're supposed to be the number one country. We're supposed to be the leaders of the free fucking world, but we look fucking piss poor right now. We look completely asinine. And I'm going to, and a lot of these things were already existent in our society before Donald Trump, but he has only perpetuated and exacerbated the problem. And he is like, like, I, and I get so um, like frustrated about it because that man is like, there is a special, like the 11th layer of hell is where he's going to go because he is trying to profit and his minions are trying to profit off of basically death and, and, and illness. But well, that's what America's about. That's how America's always been. Yeah, but... It was built on slaves. It, 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 it was built off of other people. And so so it's, it's always been about... The dollar. Yeah. It, it, it's always been about having more. And, and and that's how we've always done it. And that's and that's why that's, we've always been bullies what, because we've had we, we've been more more far far advanced with our technology and and our spending and everything else. That, that's always what it's been. So it's and now it's what's going to be what brings and and something like I said, this microscopic virus is going to bring this country to its knees because everything that. People are still not well, everybody. I'm, I'm gonna say the world. The world, but but see, but everybody, but different countries have had different responses to this. Well, the South different Co- countries have have also they've quarantined themselves as soon as possible. And that, but that's what they, I mean by the different responses. No, no, I get that, but I'm, I'm saying because I don't I don't want it to get lost. I don't want people to think that only America is the only place that's going to be negatively affected. Like there's been other places. Now our response has been trash. Yeah, because our, our our response again was about it's it's kind of like when Martha Stewart did her insider trading, right? She only saved a couple of, I think it was like a hundred thousand or something. Like it was very small compared to what she got, right? Because mm-hmm. she 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 did the insider trading with the idea of I'm going to save all this money or whatever, but it wound up costing her more money, jail, her freedom, all that other stuff. And and, and I'm using that reference to say that America tried to do the same thing, like. Instead of just shutting down, because if because if, if we'd have shut down, we could have quarantined it. Yeah, we, but, we would have had a better but opportunity. We, but we like people like you and I, like we didn't know, and so. But America, I'm I'm saying that America knew. Yeah, like the powers that be. Yeah, yeah. I I, I mean, like I said, it's it, the the shit been here since January, or or at least we were aware of coronavirus sometime in January. Which mm-hmm. means that as soon as that as, as soon as it was out there that this thing is going around, America should have been coming up with a plan on once it hits America, what are we going to do? But when you have the when you have the president of the United States downplaying it, and half the country yeah. is feeding into his bullshit. But we also got to remember that the, the the head of, the head of the United States is also a, a, a figure. He's 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 a face. He doesn't make all the. He doesn't make all of the decisions. Yeah, but he's a uh, he's emboldened people to to be as greedy and as nefarious as they want to be. Because but, but that's how America's always been, and Donald Trump is the king of that. That's yeah, the but, reason why. But he, even though he's a, it's worse now than it even ever though he's has a billionaire. Been. Is is he a billionaire? No, he's like oh, he's a millionaire. millionaire. I don't know. Whatever he is, he's very he's, he's wealthy, and people used to always talk about you know how his businesses went bankrupt and all this other stuff. But all he did was just use what America already had. He just used he just used the system the best, in, in my opinion. 
He's not, I'm not, not even, saying that it's right. I'm not, not saying even that the it's best. He's just, he's just lucky he was born into the right tax bracket. Because if he was born poor in some poor white trash somewhere, he would be a fucking serial killer. And that's it. Because he's, he he's a narcissistic sociopath. And okay. he was just literally, because he was born with money, he had access to different opportunities. Yeah, but, but, he's, I'm, but what I'm saying is that I'm, I agree with you in that all this stuff existed pre Donald Trump. But it, he. Even though he's just a figurehead, as the leader of the free world, or and I'm not even gonna say that, as the, the person that won the presidency back then in 2016, he has emboldened people over the last four years to go balls to the wall with their capitalistic greed and their xenophobia and their racism and their homophobia. That's what and their America trans- was built on, but he's made it worse. No, I, okay, that's I'm, all I'm saying. I'm not taking that away from it. I'm just saying that this is. These things, I feel like these things needed to happen, right? Why? Because now Americans can kind of make better decisions, hopefully. Hopefully, it's a learning lesson. It's, that's my thing. Hopefully, people start thinking about it and, and thinking differently. Hopefully, businesses start actually saying, okay, we have employees. What if another pandemic happens? How how can we continue as a business and how can we care for our employees? Honestly, like this shit makes me even open up my ideas of like if I ever interview again for like new jobs, mm-hmm. that'll be an interview question. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, one of my friends. Uh, she posted it on, on her Facebook. Like yeah. this should be an interview question and it should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did your company respond to the coronavirus pandemic? That, but also... <laughs> What does your company have in place in case there are any other pandemics? Or how does your company respond to emergencies or emergency situations? Like, this this situation, as bad as it is, there could still be some good out of it, I feel like. I mean, there's always definitely good that could come from the worst case scenarios. And we're living a worst case scenario right now. Um, and there's always going to be, like silver linings and glimmers of hope through all of that and that's the stuff that we do have to cling to um but i'd be lying if i didn't say that like you know and my emotions vary from moment to moment day to day i try to like stay informed but not go like balls deep into like cnn and stuff like that because it's just gonna make me anxious but um you know i i go from you know feeling again feeling anxious to feeling despair to feeling angry to feeling scared to still and, still trying to like you know and that's be, be normal and like and still like you know and living normally like you know we, we've kept tatum home being a mom hanging out with you watching tv um hanging out with who <sighs> go ahead Continue. anyway so just trying to it's like it, and, and that's and that's sometimes where I, I am I sometimes struggle to process because it's it's weird because like we're all most of us are all still living relatively normal lives or similar lives to what we've been doing minus the going to and from places and that part but you know the the Netflix and chill and the watching sheet shows together and stuff like that like all those things are things that we did prior to but now because it's like our only recourse to socialize with others outside of our house for the most part um it just kind of like hits it just hits a little different and um i'm i'm very go ahead sorry i'm no i'm I'm kind of rambling i apologize that's what you do you just you can't resist can't won't I'm, ramble on. Whatever. I'm trying to articulate my feelings, so forgive me. Um, ultimately, I'm. I have a lot of mixed emotions, and like I do wake up every day, and I'm like, did this shit really happen? Am I? Am we really living through this? And you know, the answer is yes. And so I'm just trying to process it and take it in stride. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that like I was legit, still like floored that we are where we are right now. That because. Well, yeah, go ahead. Because you're making it seem like this only happened in America. 
You're making it no. All right, that's how I'm. That's how I'm interpreting it. Mm-hmm. You're making it seem like this this thing only happened in America, and you're the only person, like only Americans are the only ones. Like it, it, it's something that happened all over. That's not, and that's not what okay. I meant. What I mean by I was saying, in Florida, the fact that we are in a global health pand- pandemic. I'm well, well, but that can happen regardless. But it doesn't. So it, now, like. I, I don't know. And, 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 and again, that's where me and you are always going to differ because at the end of the day, like, life is going to happen. Like, it's not now, if reports came out that somebody released this virus on purpose and it could have been stopped and we did nothing, that's different. But we know that viruses can happen. We know that th- these things can happen. So if this was a fucking tornado that that swept through the United States of America. Are you going to be like floored that a tornado happened to, to, to come in Maryland and, and all these different states that it normally doesn't come in? Like, I would be surprised because it's like global health pandemics don't happen. Like it's not the same as like a flu season. I anticipate the flu season every year. I don't anticipate a novel strain of a virus that is killing people to sweep the entire globe. I don't, I, that's something that my brain was not anticipating now. Now, Granted, did your I, brain know that that can happen though? I mean, I know that, I know that these things are possible, but was it, so at, just, was it on the, was it, it was on the outskirts of my mind because when you're thinking about, because like, it's never I, happened before for you. And so, not in my lifetime. So no. in your mind. Well, because you, when you hear about, these things like the Spanish flu or the bubonic plague and things like that. These things happen before the advent of modern medicine, vaccinations, um, you know, standard hygiene practices, right? That we, we know and, and some people don't practice now, but that we know and most people know and practice. So while I know that a, a global health pandemic could, obviously we're living in one. I understand that it's, it was it was possible. I understand. Like I'm not I'm not naive to the fact that anything is possible when it comes to health and wellness and, and things like that because it's happened in the past and history is often doomed to repeat itself in a lot of ways. But at the same time, did I think that it would occur in my lifetime? No. Like I just don't think I don't think that this was something that people were like the way people think about, oh, what's you know So when nine eleven happened before that, you felt like a terrorist attack could never happen. Did I think? Did I feel like a terrorist attack would happen on American soil, or to the extent that nine eleven happened? No, and then I was I was also like a I was a kid, no, but I, okay. But no, I didn't think that that was I, none of that. I didn't think it was possible, but you it were, definitely was not on my radar. That's all I'm saying. No, I I I mean, of course, being robbed is not on my radar, but it doesn't mean that it can't happen. Yeah, but see. Uh, uh, and a robbery is something that is a more common occurrence. 9-11, global health pandemics, things that completely change, alter, and shift the, the way that the world works are things that people don't necessarily, are, aren't necessarily, anti- many people, not everybody, okay. aren't necessarily anticipating it. Would you, were you surprised? Were you, when you were, you were in what, eighth grade? I was in ninth was grade. Eighth grade, yes. When 9-11 happened, were you surprised that it happened yes i was and then, oh, so was i and then once they kind of said that it was a terrorist attack and then they started talking about the other bombings that happened previously just wasn't as bad mm-hmm. but there was other bomb there was other terrorist attacks to the world trade center yes i know and then so, the early 90s so, so then once i learned that i'm like okay so this can happen i guess for me it's just like all this shit can happen so, so for you me, global health pandemic was like yeah, I'm ready. I'm 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 not ready for it. No. But what I'm saying is that I'm I'm not going to dwell on it or I'm not going to be shocked every day I wake up or whatever. It's I I don't know. I I guess for me my thought is like this can happen. So why am I shocked that it did happen? Like now I would be more shocked if it was like it's something that we could have stopped and we did not stop it. That's different. At least for me. I mean, but this is something that we could How? slow. and. Wait. How could we have slow? I mean, the only way we could have slowed it is if we would have quarantined early. Yeah, so yeah and, but 
But I already acknowledge that America is too capitalistic, so they care more about money than they care about people's life. Okay. So. Okay, I mean, you and I are just different. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that I am, I, I'm not, like, every everybody here listening, and you and I both know, like, I'm no dummy. And so it's not like I was, don't do that. I, um, I mean, it, it was just, it was good timing, but um, sorry, you're serious now. Serious hat. So I just feel like. I'm not sitting here, sitting here saying that this came out of left field and I cannot I can't believe it cuz I I can believe it but it doesn't mean to mean any less that I'm not like like taken aback by it because it has and I even I'm, I'm going to amend my statement earlier like even though we are as when I said we were living like relatively normal lives we really aren't we aren't we everything that we have everything that things at the core of what we do that we often take for granted has been altered or stopped in some way, shape, or form. Such as? Such as not being able to just go to, to the store, not being able to socialize. Not Why can't being, you just go to the store? Not, you, can, you can only go to the grocery store, the, the, the approved list of places that you can go to. Yeah, so, where, so like I can't just get leave the house right now and go to the beauty supply store and grab... You know, a new flat iron. I can't go. Yeah, but you're not going anywhere anyway. So why do you need a new flat iron? TJ, I'm saying hypothetically. My thing is this, is that our our mobility has been restricted. Okay. That is something that a lot of people take for granted. The fact, I agree. And so that that is that is drastically altering people's lives. The way that we the way that we interact with each other, six feet apart, social distancing, all these things. This has. You haven't given me six feet of space. This whole time. Now we know that. Now we both know that you be a stage five clinger with me. So stop. Stop it. I'm mm-hmm. not a stage five clinger. Okay. But anyway, it's something different when you in the bed. But um, it's, it's a box next to me. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh my god, you're so sickening. Um, but like you have to at least acknowledge it. Like our daily lives have been drastically altered by this. I mean, it's been altered in the sense that we can't do the free things that we were able to do, like just do that stuff. But I'm not... Yes, we can't congregate in groups of more than 10 people. Okay. How often do we congregate with a group of more than 10 people? If we had a, fa- I, if we had a family game night, we could get uh, at least okay. 11 people in our, in our All house. All I said was how often. I didn't say if, yes, can we get more than 10 people? That's easy. I'm not saying that we can't. What I'm trying to say is that... Y- You're making it seem like our life is so drastically different. The only difference is, is that someone is telling you what you can and can't do. That's drastically different. Some, the governor has told us where we can and cannot go and what we can and cannot do. Now, I'm fine with it because it's for the safety. Well, obviously you're not fine with it. No, no, I am fine with it. What I'm saying, what I, the only point I'm trying to make to you is that, listen, listen. I'm listening, but it's making no sense. No, it makes sense because the point I was trying to make was not acknowledging. I don't have a problem with what's happening as far as our restrictions are are concerned. What I'm trying to what I'm trying to get you to acknowledge is that they are drastic. That's all. Uh, I think that that varies by the person. It's not drastic to me. I like being home anyway. So yeah, the, the, and, and that's but see, that's you. Yeah, yeah. So. Say that so. So say that it could be drastic for some people. Don't say it's drastic for everybody because it's not. There are some people who's okay with it. Some people who's like, I don't have to go outside. I'd rather be healthy. But for those people like yourself who feels like you got to be out because That's not what I was saying either. Okay. All I'm all I am saying is that they these are drastic times so drastic measures have been taken the fact that there's a shelter in place in different states the fact that they've closed down businesses the fact that they've shut schools some some school years have already been canceled to the end of the school year those are drastic measures put it like this school systems being closed virginia is closed for the end of the year okay. baltimore i mean maryland is now extended out to april 24th at this point okay that is drastic no but period full stop because okay. and it, it's it's necessary and I, I don't have a problem with it. All I'm trying to say is so can something be drastic and necessary? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. When literally the saying drastic times call for drastic measures sometimes, and this is one of those moments. Yeah. All I'm trying to say is that this. So you're this, just highlighting that is drastic. I got you. That that's it. 
not that not that I have a problem with it, not that I'm bucking against it. All I'm trying to say though is that oh, that for some people and and certain and for some institutions and and, and parts but of our society. That's probably why we are where we're at now because you knew that this shit was out here and people still wanted to go out and do their spring break and everything else. So and those people are. Well, that's the reason why. Life. That's the reason why we have a drastic situation. I agree because there's people who drastically because we have people who you could tell them people you could tell them don't go to this area because it's sick people and they're saying well I I paid my money for this so I don't care about that stuff so that's why drastic things have to happen. I I fully understand that and agree with it. But okay, all out all I was trying to say was that they they were happening and and just trying to get you to understand that like i understand that these things are happening but i also feel like it's happening to to protect us so yes do i to me that's not drastic so 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 for me it's not drastic for me it's this is what we have to do i mean i mean yes i'm i'm sorry i'm acknowledging that it can be considered drastic but it's like it's like a doctor saying you have cancer and we need to do chemo right now we have to do surgery right now Are, are is the individual going to say nah I got a party to go to next week. I got a trip. Or, or they're going to be like, save my life. Like, so. Well, I think that's the issue that we're, we're seeing now, which is that, again, which I think, because you, you know, you've, you've referenced several times already about how, like, especially pertaining to the United States, that we're a capitalistic society. We're also very much like an individualist society, right? Because there are mm-hmm. certain cultures, or I should say culture, there are certain cultures in this world that are collectivist, and there are some that are individualistic, and ours is an individualistic one. One hundred percent. When it's fifty if, states if, with if, fifty different ideas, and everybody wants to be bigger, better, smarter than the next person. So when you have people who, when if it impacts me directly or my loved one, now I care. But the fact that like this, which is explains why people are not taking heed to social distancing, to staying at home, to quarantines, whatever, because. They're like, well, I'm fine, so why should I stop my life? But it's not, it's not about youth worry. Like the point is like, and which is what they've been basically recommending is, don't think of it as I'm, I don't, I can't go out, so I don't get sick. Sick. Think about it as I can't go out, so I don't make other people sick. But getting people in this country to think about others is is a hard stretch for some people, and. Most people, I feel like, are doing the right thing, but there's a lot of people who aren't, and that's why this shit is going to get dragged out even longer than what it already has to be. So, huh, I feel like it, it's... I think we can both agree that it's a lot. No, it's, it's, it's definitely not. It's it's a new normal, something that we have to get used to. It, excuse me. Hopefully, we learn from this. Hopefully, the next pandemic that happens, people aren't... Thinking is a joke because that's really what it was. People heard the coronavirus and your president saying it wasn't as bad or whatever, and people were just living their lives, making this, jokes about this, it at the, at the this most, Chinese people. This is the Y two K thing all over again, or whatever. A hoax. Yeah, it's the same hoax of of of, of whatever. So people didn't take it serious, but yo, know, we got to take it serious. And then even with that, think about your careers. Think about your employer. This is the time that. People that, that people need to really sit back and really think about who they work for. What matters? Yeah, no, yeah, because you can have a job, but you should want to work for a company that's gonna that cares about their employees and don't care about the bottom line. Because mm-hmm. the bottom line is, if a company's good enough, the bottom line is gonna be the bottom line. Mm-hmm. It may hit bumps and bruises, but it's the bottom line. But the fact that you have companies who have to lay who have to lay off their fucking employees who are part time or seasonal, even though they may need these funds, like to me, it's just crazy. And that just shows again. I'm not telling people what to do, but I'm saying that people need to be mindful. They need to understand. The world around them, the 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 employers, the, the the things that you do, stuff like that. This should kind of be like a a wake up call, you know. I mean, yeah, it's definitely. I think it's a it's a wake up call to a lot of people. It's a wake up call to what people value, and and you know, quite honestly, it's a wake up call to like how people move. Like some people's morals don't line up, and and it's and it's becoming apparently clear during this whole pandemic, but um. 
that was an extremely long elevator ride. Um, well, you, we only did you. So. I know. So, and I had I was going to go down and up, but I'm well, going to start it down. So I'm just so go up. Okay. Come on. You can ramble all you want, love. <sighs> going up. I'll keep this part brief, which is that. Shh. What's brief for you? Ultimately, twenty-five minutes. Anyway, ultimately, throughout all of this, I am. When we talked about when I mentioned like the the glimmers of hope and the silver linings and stuff, there have definitely been some positives that have come out of this, from the things like the you know the virtual parties that people have been having, uh, specifically like everybody's been talking about DJ D Nice, um, and the ways in which that we we are fortunate to be in parts of the world in a part of the world where we have the luxury of remaining connected with loved ones um, is something else that I am grateful for. Like last night I had a happy hour, virtual happy hour with my line sisters and I laughed and we drank and we were talking shit and it was, you know, much needed. So despite all of this, you know, I'm grateful for the, the, the time I get to like be home and, you know, getting this new house together and not feeling like so stressed out of having to get to work and come back being able to be with Tatum and TJ, you know, kind of like uninterrupted is I'm grateful for. And um, I'm, you know, still just trying to focus on that too as in in the the middle of, you know, the madness. And with that, I yield. I'm going to go up. It should be positive. Mm-hmm. So this will be two, you know. Uh, it can always be worse. As I like to say, so mm-hmm. even during a pandemic, we could have the coronavirus. And from what people are saying, it's not fun. It's like flu like, they lose sense of taste and smell, and it's painful. So, you know, I'm counting my blessings there. Um, and then, you know, this, this nice, beautiful lady in front of me, you know, <laughs> got to. Got to uh, reintroduce myself to her, you know. I I feel like she's a brand new woman since we've been quarantined. Like, you know. How so? You know. She's not walking around her bonnet no more. What? She got the curls popping. Listen, she don't ever want to look like anything on a regular quarantine come. And now she want to do her hair and stuff like that. I look. I look. Like I always look. Mm, it's a little different, glowing a little differently. Well, I mean, for what it's worth, I I did the first day of all of this. I was my first day at my new job, so I'm very. The first day of what? My new job, of the of the quarant of like the. That was the, like two weeks ago. I'm talking about right now. Oh, okay. Right now, I'm looking glowing and shiny. Yeah, I was trying to give you a compliment. But... Oh, thank you. I appreciate Let's it. Let's go down, man. Shut up. Quarantine while while being married. Divorce. But <laughs> anyway. Um, well that was our very, very lengthy elevator talk, but I mean, we would be I mean, what else are we gonna talk about besides what's going on in the world, especially since we haven't been on uh we haven't recorded in a couple of weeks. Um, but now it's time for our relationship tip of the week. And I will kick that off as well. And this, of course, well, not of course, but this one definitely applies to any of the ships that you are in, family, kinship, uh, relationship, or friendships. Um, And the tip is to be kind to yourselves and each other during this time of, I called it government-mandated quality time for a lot of states and places. Um, As much as we love being usually is you might want to be around your partner spend quality time with people being kind of forced into spending um extreme amounts of time together can be put a strain on a lot of relationships and um how people cope with what's going on may not align with how you cope with it so then there's a lot of there could be a lot of resentment or frustration on that part too so you gotta like you know it kind of circles back to what i always say which is grace and accountability um you gotta give people space to kind of cope with this however they see fit as long as it's you know relatively still healthy but you can't expect people to feel the same way you feel and so you gotta you know give them the space to feel things out and and not try to judge them and also, not try to drive each other crazy during this time. 
So that's my relationship. So tip. my tip of the week okay. is, but you said you you ended it. I, yes, I did. What? Go ahead. You ended it. You you wanted to be able to say. Go uh, ahead. I was saying. So that's my relationship tip of the and then. Go ahead. Week. <laughs> Go ahead, finish it. Weak. Oh. Thank you for that filler word. It's not a filler word, but okay. You was filling you was filling a conversation. The shit was over. Continue. Am I wrong? I apologize, Danielle. I forgive you. That'd be the right thing. Don't roll your eyes. I forgive you, TJ. Whatever. Anyway, my tip of the week is to use this time wisely. I don't know everybody's situation, but if you're teleworking. Or if you're just mandated to stay at home, like you should really use this time, read a book, work on any plans you have, do some housework, work on your relationships. If that, if you're married, work on that. <laughs> if you're uh, dating, but live together, you know, just use this time. Don't make this time in vain. Like don't do the shit that you would normally do if you had just free time. I, I would say this... This may be like a blessing in disguise and we should be using this time to work on ideas that we have or things that we want to do or plans. I definitely I can I see what you're coming from and I agree. I, but also I, I would like to say that I also feel like you should not. But don't don't beat yourself up if you're not like in working on six different side hustles with all of this time. Like make sure that you also make time for yourself to like. Re- rest, recoup, disengage, yeah, I, be at peace with yourself. I'm not saying do shit. Yourself. I'm not saying do shit because people on IG are saying you should do it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I'm saying if you wanted to read that book and you said you didn't have time, now you have time. Because mm-hmm. it's not like you can go anywhere. Yeah. yeah so, well, some, some people have time, yeah. All right. Even if you're working, when your shift is over... You may have went to happy hour. You're not going to happy hour no more. All I'm trying to say is use this time wisely. You have the time to use. Don't make it seem like... Because we don't know how long this quarantine is going to be. If it's a month, if it's two months, if it's the whole year, you should be able to reinvent yourself or make yourself better. And again, it doesn't have to be a plan per se. Mm -hmm. Read read that book that you wanted to read. Mm -hmm. Come up with whatever plans that you had. If there... You may have had a project in your house that you wanted to work on. You may have had some la- some Legos you wanted to build, or you wanted to do something for your for your child. Or all I'm saying is that whatever it is, use this time. You have the time now, and you can't say you don't have the time mm-hmm. because again, even if you are teleworking, when you're off your shift, you're off your shift, or wait until the weekend. Mm-hmm. There's time to do stuff. That's. That's the major thing. And I'm saying just utilize this time because we may not get this much time again or we may not get these opportunities again. So my tip would be to utilize your time the best way possible. And with that, I yield. Thank you. Well, now, of course, wouldn't be an episode of Lover's Quarrel if TJ did not try to stump me with his word of the week. This is going to be an easy word. Okay. Because, you know, I want to make it... Easy for you. Mm. Not really, but exactly. I just like the way I, I like the word. You want to so. try? You trying to preface yourself so you feel like you trying to throw me a bone? You know, I'm, I'm I'm prefacing the way you do. Like when you don't know something, you'd be like, "Uh, I'm gonna get this wrong" because you want to preface that you don't know it. That's what was that? Mm-hmm. Whatever. I'm not feeling you right now. <laughs> Why? Because I'm not buying your bullshit. Mm. You're not laughing at my jokes like you normally did. Well, you'd be funnier. <laughs> Fire. My word of the week is teeming. Doorknobs are not as clean as they look and are often teeming with germs. Teeming. Teeming. T E E M I N G. See? You're back. <laughs> I you may have won last week, too. I don't remember. I do remember that you haven't given me my money. That's what I do remember. All them episodes ago where I, I bet TJ and I've won $40. Have I seen those $40? Nope. 
You know what? You about to cash at me right now? Cash at your ass right now. Turn, turn your ring on. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's just make sure that's. I'm listening. We're waiting. Okay, hold on. Whenever you're ready. I just shame you into giving my money. I got you. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure. Oh, there it goes. There I am. Just waiting. Just waiting. This is only an hour and change podcast, right? It was sent, so. Oh. Well, it doesn't say that it's received yet. Can't wait to hear that little. Oh, I'm looking. Oh, for my funky ass $40? Your funky ass $40. Whatever. Let me see. Here, I'll at least confirm if it's in here. You see that I sent it, though. Oh, there it is. No ringer. It didn't it didn't come up this right. time. Well, she got her, her fucking forty dollars, so I don't have to ever hear about this shit ever again. Thank you. Whatever. Just you know, don't lose, and then you don't have to worry about it. I mean, losing is a part of life. Not everybody's gonna win, so I'm okay with that. This is absolutely correct. And on that note, we can take a moment from our sponsor, mm-hmm. and then we'll be back with our love note. Hey friend, it's time for you to ditch those workout gloves and get the grip and wrist support you deserve. What do you suggest? You need to get the Gaines Load and Lock Grips by Gaines Sports Gear. They are more durable than gloves, have a non-slip grip pad that provides grip support and added wrist support unlike your traditional workout gloves and will protect your hands from calluses. Do they come in different colors? Not only do they come in different colors, but they are available for men and women. Do yourself a favor, go to gainsportsgear.com. And remember, a better grip equals a better lift. Embrace the process. And you too can embrace the process by using our code LOVERS10 at Gains, G-A-I-N-Z, sportsgear.com. And as far as we know, they're still shipping. So, fuck Corona. Get that in-house workout. Exactly. So, use that... uh Lock and low wrist wraps and, you know, pick up some laundry, you know, do some handy work around the house. Do what you got to do. I don't think you got to use the the lock and load wrist wraps to pick up laundry. But uh, listen, you I gotta, like the way that you're thinking. You got to get creative. I guess. And now back to the episode. And we are back and it is now time for a love note. And... This one comes from a fan of ours or a first-time listener who um, found us on the So Shameless podcast. So Shameless podcast. Shout out to Tahoe, um, who had us on uh, with the Unruly Unrated uh, podcast a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, shout out to So Shameless, Dodge, Yes, Trump, of course, everybody. Because she's rude, y'all. I apologize. That was not my intention. Um, and, um, let's get started. So she says, hi, I just finished, oh, bitch better have my money episode. (laughs) How appropriate since TJ just gave me my money and I completely love you both. And I heard you on the So Shameless podcast and I love both your views. So naturally I want relationship advice. So here is her problem and we're going to call her, um, let's call her Maria. Okay. So Maria says, on April 1st, haha, my partner and I will be together for two years dating, um, and sorry, together two years and dating for about three years, excuse me. He's absolutely great. He has his issues with communication and emotions. The emotions part being um, my opinion. That fool knows he has communication issues, but I'm here to learn and grow with him so I have patience, or so I thought. So... I said I love you about the first year in. He felt it was too soon, and I was just like, oh, well, okay then. However, you know, I get it. We don't move at the same pace. We often talk about being married and all these future plans, and I'm stuck. Stuck on the I love you thing. Like, why won't you say it, but you can plan this future with me? I know he cares about me. He has been there for me in ways my only my family has been there for me in the past. I feel like this is real and we are in it for the long haul. What I'm trying to understand is the I love you hang up. 
His actions show it, so should I settle for that? And I'm just that woman who needs to hear it. Do I give this a deadline? What if he wakes up one day and is like, all right, well, I got to go. It's not like I loved you anyway. Am I just crazy or should I just enjoy the healthiest relationship I've ever had? And she said, P.S., her very first relationship, she was gaslighted and she didn't even realize it until the So Shameless podcast. Motherfuckers are foul as fuck. Um, And she also wished us a happy uh, anniversary because when she sent this, we had just celebrated our anniversary. Um, So really, I guess the question is like, she's saying that her boyfriend is, Maria is saying that her boyfriend is showing her all the signs that he cares and loves for her he's being there for her in ways that only like family has been there for her he's a healthy relationship but it's three years of dating two years of being together she said i love you after a year and yet here we are and he's yet to say those words to her uh i'm gonna say that you would need to figure out what the hang up is for him not feeling comfortable saying it Mm -hmm. it sounds like to me there's trauma there Mm-hmm. Something happened that made him not want to say it. Mm-hmm. Is the way I would want to think about it. Otherwise, I would just say he just maybe he don't really love you, or or he hasn't fallen in love with you yet. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say that to be negative because I, I mean, you kind of know. I feel like, but it seems like. But you need to hear it. You do need to hear it, but it does seem like there. It seems like there's something more there, mm-hmm. and I think. Finding that out. But, I mean, if this is the healthiest relationship. See, it's weird because if this is your healthiest relationship, but that's going to be something that's that that, that can hinder it. You don't want to start resenting him mm-hmm. and, and, and then turning something that is healthy to be unhealthy. Mm-hmm. I think that. Yeah, I I agree with TJ in that there might be something something deep seated or, you know, from his past that might have led him to not feel comfortable saying it or not feel like or maybe not feeling like it needs to be verbalized um a lot of people come from families where they don't say i love you all that much so it might feel like unnatural or um uncomfortable to say it because it is a very vulnerable statement um but i also understand where you're coming from because especially like you said this over let's say at least over a year ago right if you said it in this the first at the end of the first year of you guys like being an official couple then you know it could be really you know unsure ground uncertain ground territory that you're in if you feel like well i said it but then he's not saying it back to me Mm -hmm. um and i think you deserve that if that's like if that's something that you value and hold important that you know you deserve to hear the words or to at least understand why he's not comfortable saying it because maybe if he gives you like the most legitimate value um valid reasoning behind why he feels that way um or or won't say it and you're you're comfortable with it then you can move forward but i feel like if you don't have the conversation and express that this is i need to hear these words or i needed at least a justification as to why i haven't heard them thus far um that's fair because I would probably feel similar to you. Um, I would say, so to answer your questions, you want, you want to understand, is the I love you a hang up? Um, I'm going to say yes, because it's a hang up for you. So I don't want to invalidate your feelings. Mm-hmm. And no one should. If that's how you feel, if, if, if you want to hear I love you because you've said it and they haven't said it, your feelings are, are validated. Mm-hmm. Um as far as a timeline, a deadline, you don't want... I would always recommend against deadlines because if he starts saying it, did he start saying it because you gave him a deadline? Or did he start saying it because he's just shutting you up? Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like you got to let things be natural. Um, but it's hard because, again, you said it over a year ago and you still haven't heard it. And I can understand your mind playing tricks on you because you've even put in here that, you know... What if one day he wakes up and and is like and is like, all right, I never loved you anyway. So you're already putting, yeah, projecting. Yeah, you're already projecting like worst case scenario. And, and you shouldn't. I would say if everything is good, just just continue rolling with it. But try to figure out why the hang up is is, is like yeah. why he doesn't feel comfortable saying I love you or what's stopping him from saying yeah. I love you. I think in the very least, like you deserve that much of an explanation, and then. From there, you can make a decision about 
if what like I said, if what you feel like he's saying was justified, and if he if his explanation or hesitancy to like, to verbalize those words is something that you're willing to live with, then you can at least now move forward from that. Or if it's not, then you can be like, well, that's just not good enough, and I just this, this is what I need in order to feel like I'm secure in my relationship. And even though it might seem small, even though his actions are in alignment with someone who loves you. You know, we say it all the time. We, I quote the read all the time. Like words mean things, and and we and whether or not it's important to him, if he loves you enough to know that it's important to you, and there's no legitimate hang up behind it, then he should be okay to say those words to you. He may not have to say it every time you guys leave the room and every time he leaves the house or whatever, but saying it because it's he 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 feels that way it shouldn't be a problem to at least articulate it now and again. Yeah, 100%. But you also got to figure out what that person has gone through and why they don't feel comfortable saying it. Because if he says, you know what, I'm never going to say I love you or I'm only going to do it, I do it very seldomly, right? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? You know what I mean? These are other things that you got to kind of think about now. Mm-hmm. What if what if he's going to be the same person? He's going to be the man of your dreams. He's willing to marry. He's doing all this other stuff, but saying "I love you" is not what he's going to do. Is that enough for you to not be with that person? And if so, that's a then you have to ask yourself. Yeah, that. yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm. That's why I'm getting it, putting it out there. Mm-hmm. Like you, you have to kind of figure that out. But I don't think that. And and this is just my opinion. I, I don't think that it's always going to be. I, I don't think something like that. Is necessarily uh, uh, can be a deal breaker, unless it's going to be something that, like I said, if he says I'm never going to tell you I love you, then that might you know what I mean because you may want to hear those words. Definitely, and everyone deserves to hear what they want to hear or feel the way that they want to feel. So, yep, and don't make concessions about what you need, even if like like while TJ and I definitely will always say that like no person is perfect in all areas of a relationship, you know. But people have their deal breakers or people have their like bottom lines where they're like, okay, I can stand for this or I can't stand for that or this really matters to me. And you have to make that decision for yourself um, to determine if it's if it's something that you want to press or if there's something that if something that you're willing to let go of. Um, But at the very least, you're owed an explanation um, as to why. And that conversation, I think, needs to happen. Um, and then from there, you can make an informed decision about how you want to proceed. So I hope that was helpful. I do too. Um, and you know, check back in with us. Yes. Maria. Yes. Maria, let us know, email us and let us know what he said and how you feel about it. So that way we can update our listeners. Um, and now it is time for our quarrel. And in the spirit of all things Rona related, um, the question or the the topic is, if you have a girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, and you also have a child, um, but not with that significant other, with another person, in this current state of affairs where self quarantine or social distancing is a matter of life and death who do you stay with do you stay with your partner or do you stay with your child and your child's other parent and begin and let we can give some context you've been in this relationship with your partner for over a year year and a half so this is not like fresh fresh this is like established relationship What do you think? So I think that you stay with your child and your baby mother because you want to be with your child, right? But then I'm also like, what if you and your baby mother don't get along, right? Mm -hmm. Do you still stay? Like, you know what I mean? I think it's like a lot of mitigating factors. Like, what? how old is your child? Because, like, is this, like, fresh baby? Like, like is your kid, like, a year old, two years old? Maybe, let's say, two years old or, like, two to four years old. Because, like, that means, like, y'all, like, was fucking, like, within the last five years. So, 
you know, and That's we and, your mind's and we don't have like we, we don't have a set timeline. It's not like six weeks, flatten the curve, we out of this bitch. This could be six months. This could be like people get horny, and if you are spending all your time there, like what if you fall back into that old thing? Or on the flip side, like what if you hate? that person and you just can't take it no more now it's arguing and that's like toxic and stuff so i don't know it's a tough question i feel like i i feel like my gut would be like i want to be with my child or children during this time period but there needs to be some level of like Boundaries or communication or something like that. I don't know. It's, oh, this that's a tough one. Cause like, what if? But like, okay. So what if your kid's like thirteen? Then you gonna go stay? You gonna stay at your uh, your girlfriend's house? Or, part, or no matter what, you gonna go stay with your kid? I would. I mean, part of me would say I would want to stay with my kid. But again, I mean, you got to take into consideration what is your relationship with your baby mother. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, if I had a baby mother, I would hope me and her are like, well, you are my baby mother, but <laughs> I would hope. So, okay. I, I would hope that if me and you did not work, we could still be like close friends. And I know that's going to be hard for you because I'm like the love of your life and everything. Oh, and, I, and you're not mine? Excuse me, and I'm not yours? I mean, you are mine too, but you know, I just. So let me ask you this. What? Okay. You and I break up. Let's say Tatum's five. Okay? So we're a little bit in the future. Right? Uh huh. But this is now. Like, we're. This is all happening, and she, but she's five instead. Uh huh. And me and you've been broken up for two years. But now you want to stay with me and Tatum because you want to be. You don't want to be apart from her, right? And you have a new girlfriend. She's over there. Okay. Are you going to try and have sex with me? Let's say we're friends, right? We're co-parents. We're doing well. Are you going to try and climb in bed with me? Uh, no. Not even tiny bit? You going to go six months? No poom? I said six months? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a long time. I mean, I've done it before, so like. Yeah. The six months leading up to before we had sex for the first time. Okay. Anyway, um, I don't know. That's different, cause you, were, cause you were more than my baby mother. I was your wife. Yeah. So it's like we've kind of like, yeah. She still have Tatum's tiara on your head. Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, so that's that's a little bit different. But if you was just like my baby mother, like you was my joint. Who we were pregnant. in a relationship. Period. Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah, but no, it's like with different levels. So being married is, might be there. So because like we were, because like I'm your ex-wife, love. you're gonna try and sleep with me again. You're gonna cheat on your girlfriend. She ain't my wife. Oh, what? So she's not my wife. <laughs> you ain't shit. Um. No, I don't. I don't think so. Because to me, you broke up. We but, broke up for a reason. I don't know. That's but tough. would you you would stay with me and take them? I would and like to. And not your to. girlfriend of two years. I would like to. What if you already live with her? You would still come stay with us? Yeah, I, or me and her will come stay with you. What if she's not welcome in my house? Why is she not welcome The in devil my house? is not welcome <laughs> here. Why is she not welcome in your house? Maybe I don't fuck with her. Maybe I don't know her like that. Well, you know how I feel about my people in my life. So if you didn't fuck with her, I probably wouldn't. So you'd be, you'd be like, if my ex-wife don't fuck with you, I wouldn't be with you to begin with. Pre-Rona pandemic. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be with somebody that that I couldn't be with. Around, like, y- y- all your people. Yeah, like, it's... In- it's in- exes included. Well, not all my exes, but... It's, like I said, it's different because you're, you're, you're my wife. So if it, if it would happen with my wife, who... Obviously, we were very close because we got married and all the other good stuff. Then, to me, it's just like, unless me and you broke up on like some crazy terms. But if we just, you know, it's no longer working for us, and we decide to go our separate ways, and we're good, 
I would hope that my next girlfriend or my next wife can be cool with with, with my wife. With my, sorry, with my ex wife. <laughs> like I don't know. Best case scenario. Okay, so I guess that's tough. Ser- so all things to the side. Yeah. In this pandemic, who should someone stay with? Who should they stay with? Their partner or their child and their ex? Or their child's other parent? Stay with stay with the uh, significant other. Stay with the significant other. Yeah. So that I s- way, if you get sick or anything, you don't give it to your child. Okay. But then what if you know that you're going to go, like, weeks, months without seeing your child face-to-face? Just FaceTime. Without face-to-face. In the flesh. I mean, I would... I There would have to be, like, a... a this may be the last time I'm ever going to see my child ever type situation. For me, I think. But again, I don't know that a situation just because... If me and the baby mother aren't super cool, why would I want to stay there? What if she has, like... A a, nigga? uh, Yeah. So, here's what I think. I think that if me and my child's father are on good terms, we're co-parenting well, then I would go stay with them. But if we're not on good terms, we don't get along, we fight all the time, it's toxic, whatever, I would still stay with my significant other my current significant other during this time and even as much as it pains me i feel like it wouldn't be good for my child or children to see what like seeing that unfold day in day out right like i feel like that's not going to be healthy either so it might be like a really difficult decision but i feel like that would be the the turning point in that like so i think it depends on your relationship with the person if you fuck with the ex and y'all co-parent good and y'all cool then by all means like y'all bunker down together and make it work because we are in uncertain times but if y'all don't fuck with each other it's always nasty it's always a problem or so whatever you're better off sparing your child or children from seeing that constantly also now i'm thinking about it what is our living arrangement because if the child's with you majority of the time anyway now, them not seeing me as much isn't going to be as... Well, what if it's it's like every other... Like, you know, I get Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and you get Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So And it's Sunday, we alternate. So, if we're doing it like that, then mm-hmm. it, I think that may be harder because you're, di- you're disrupting the norm. Mm-hmm. But if it was like, I see my child, I get my child every other week or... Like, you know what I mean? Like, only on the weekends, but every other. Then I might be like, I'm going to stay with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. <sighs> That's tough. It is tough. Because I did, like, you know, because my whole thing, too, is like, there's nothing coming between me and Tatum. Like, I'm not going to yeah. not want to be around her. I get that. But I'm also thinking about the, the, the other thing, the other factors. Yeah. It's just a difficult decision. I, I think there yeah, are a lot of people having to make that call now because... It's, it's real out here and so now you gotta figure out wh- which one ma- and then it's just like how do you like how supportive is your partner gonna be if you're like if you do make the decision to go stay with your ex and your child because if I made that decision my I think my partner sh- my partner would understand because they would understand how important my child is to me see this is gonna be beneficial if your partner also had a kid and then they can go stay with their <laughs> ex and their kid nah. and you go stay with your ex and your kid and everybody's just back with their exes and their kids and until until this thing blows over, what do you? That's the dishwasher. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, not a perfect quarrel, but definitely uh, one for you guys to think on. I want to, and I want you guys to like when you listen to this episode, tell us what you think. Like, you think what would you do if this was the situation? What do you think people should do in this situation? Because it's definitely a tricky one, and it's not something that you could take lightly. But. That's all I got. How about you? That's all I got. Well, y'all. This has been yet another episode of Lovers Quarrel. Um, it, you know, when we check back in with you next week, we're gonna be like day one hundred and thirty-seven of the uh, 
quarantine and social distancing. Um, but in all seriousness, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Make sure that you are staying inside at all turns and, uh, and in all ways, shapes, and forms whenever possible. Um, making sure that you're keeping up with the hand washing and the stripping of clothes if you've gone out into public spaces. Um, you know conducting yourself accordingly don't gather in crowds more than 10 just do what you're supposed to do so that way we can squash and flatten this curve and we can save lives out here because shit is getting real and we want everybody to be safe because these are uncertain times and uncharted territory so however you're feeling is okay you know know that we can connect um with you and we're we're in this together and we just got to do right so we can get through this um so just stay safe y'all and know that you know we're praying for everybody and thank you to all of our uh frontline people our medical health care providers shout out to all of the delivery and uh uh carry out places and grocery store clerks and pharmacists and bank tellers and gas station attendants all the people that are keeping this economy and this society afloat right now we commend you and we thank you and we tip our hats to you um but like tj said this has been yet another episode of lovers quarrel um you know that of course you can find us on instagram at lovers quarrel show on twitter at lovers quarrel seven and you can always email us your questions concerns comments um headaches and heartaches at lovers quarrel show at gmail.com um you know as always i am your girl danny i'm your guy tj and you know that we fuss we fight but, but we, we love, love. Bye. bye say bye 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 bye